How we doing? Welcome to Culinary 110, back at the house. Week three, day three lecture. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, the balancing of the station, uh, theme menus, Georgia grown, American regional cuisine, sustainability, and local, form, local farming. Uh, I've sent you out some videos or YouTube videos to look at. First of all, I want to talk about your projects and assignments. You need to get it done. All right, stop, stop slacking. Uh, it needs to get done quickly and be on time. This is hurting your grade. Most of you are on top of it, and then some of you aren't. All right, uh, this is very, very important class. And this is all you. This is all your work, all your participation. I can see right here on the computer how many times you click, how, many, how long you've been on, on doing the classes, um, your participation, I see all that, and that's how I put your attendance in, and that's how I was gonna be grading everything. All right, thank you for the emails, thank you for the texting, keep it coming if you have questions, but this is all on you. I, I, you're getting ready to graduate, these classes will get you out, uh, we're moving on to the next to your associates program. Uh, you know, please, you don't want to, you don't want to ruin this opportunity. So just please stay on it and get everything done. All right. Uh, with the uh, aquaculture and sustainable farming, there's videos, pretty neat, huh? Open your eyes a little bit. If you're looking at the sidebar on the YouTube channel. Uh, you show that, that you're, you're looking at that video that I presented to you, but there's all these other ones to look at. Hopefully you have looked at those. Uh, you need to know about this. This is the way of the future. This is where we're getting our food. It's going to be sustainable farming, aquacultural, hydroponic gardens in the Netherlands. It's going crazy over there. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's really, really, really important. Excuse me, my back's still sore. I just tweaked it a little bit and that hurt. Uh, but you need to you need to be sure that you're reading up on this because this is this is the future. This is where we're going to be getting all our food. All right, the major bulk of it. Uh, the good thing about Augusta, Georgia, is we have tons of produce around here that you can go to the farms. Uh, in South Carolina, there's a great farm over there. You see them right there with all the strawberry the strawberry fields and uh, dairy. Uh, right now, you know, I'm doing my my Georgia beef at the Pinnacle Club. And it's, it's, it's raised and grazed here in Georgia, and then it's uh, gone to fabrication process here in Augusta, and then I pick it up at a warehouse, and you know, I pick up you know, a case of tenderloin, a case of ribeyes, prime, Georgia prime. You know, I pick it up right there, which cuts out the middleman, which lowers my price. I'm actually getting prime beef for the cost of, co of choice, of choice beef, right? cost of choice beef because there's no middleman I can go right to the plant and pick it up so it's pretty cool and as you see my hat behind me that's the Georgia grown I was uh, you know selected this year 2020 as one of the executive chefs uh, for Georgia grown here in the state and there's only six of us that were selected and most of them are out of Atlanta and I'm the only one over here on this side of the state and it's because I work a lot with Georgia product you know squash onions mushrooms, uh, you know, zucchinis, and uh, I get the dairy out of South Carolina, all my milk and heavy cream and buttermilk comes out of, uh, Hickory Farms out of, of, of uh, I forget the town in South Carolina, but great spot, you know, so you get the source of that. And we have the farmer's market. Whenever the farmer's market opens up downtown, you need to go down and check it out. There's lots of produce there, so it's awesome. Uh, when I'm working Saturdays at the club, I go down there, spend, you know, $20, $30, you know, I get these two huge bags of produce, and I bring it up to the restaurant, and it's only two blocks away, and I start prepping all that for the guests, you know, for our members. You know, great spring onions and all that. So it's really important uh, to do that. Uh, with your menu, if you look at the menus that I sent you for... Uh, the, let's go up front here, let's find it. Uh, looking at egg grill, Eggers Grill. The menu for that. 
So you look on the Edgar's Grill menu, and every menu that you have that you're gonna make, you gotta make sure that it's evenly spread out between the line. You don't want everything on saute done. You don't want everything on the grill. You don't want everything fried, unless you got 20 million fryers, you know? But you have to spread that out. And sometimes it's two components, or one component coming off of two different stations. So you have to be really careful in how you do that and how you spread out your menu. So you have a saute station that they're sauteing, you know, scallops and shrimp and, and maybe veal and, and, and all that. But they also have to do the veg of the day, right? So they have to do the vegetables. Uh, they have to make sure the potatoes are ready to go, maybe making some finishing sauces. The grill guy, you know, he's, he's inundated with, you know, the fish choice, the, the uh, steak choice, chicken. You got ribs, you got a pork chop. I mean, where's this all coming from? You know, you got the fry guy, you got salads. I mean, salads, the, the garbage gets hit twice, all right? You got, you got the salad course or an apple course, and then you got it at the end with desserts. Usually the garbage section gets desserts. So you have to make sure that that menu is spread evenly out amongst your staff. And how you figure that out is you come up with a menu, you present the menu to your crew, your team, your brigade, and then you let them sort it out. Is this, where can we work this magic? Where can we make this product and make sure it comes out as fast as possible, as consistent as possible, out to the guest? Right, very important on that. Uh, American Regional, American Regional Cuisine is, is pretty neat. Um, uh, it's, you know, you have the Northeast and the lobster, you have the East Coast with all the fish, uh, you got the southeast with fish again and, and pulled pork and uh, you got Creole, uh, you got uh, Florida, the Floribian cuisine, which is a mix of Florida and the Caribbean. You have the deep south with your fried foods going over to, uh, you know, the southwest Tex-Mex barbecue again. You got the Midwest. You know, we have uh, the north, Northwest up there with, you know, all the salmon. And then you have the California coast with all the stuff that's going on in California. Then you got Hawaii. I mean, that, that's another whole culture system right there. So there's tons of American regions that have so much good food. I'm looking uh, over the last couple of days when I was laid up uh, on Netflix pretty neat little show called uh, Restaurants on the Edge, and it's restaurants that are on the edge of going out of business. <laughs> and these three people go in and they redo the, the restaurants for them, but there's some really interesting concepts that you could check out there that are really, uh, I think, uh, that would add a little bit to your, uh, your restaurant that you're planning out for the restaurant class and menus. Um, and then we're talking about uh, themed menus. A theme menu, okay, you have a birthday, uh, you have an anniversary, you have, uh, you know, weddings, and all, and, and all that. But then there's other stuff that are out there that you could do for uh, Game of Thrones, you know, Mad Men, uh, 30 Rock, you know, How I Met Your Mother, CSI, Hawaii Five-0. Gossip Girl, True Bloods, American Idol. They have all these themes. I'm getting this off of Epicurious, by the way. Epicurious.com is a great website to go for. You should have an icon already put on your phone or on uh, your laptop uh, called Epicurious. Epicurious. E-P-I-C-U-R-I-O-U-S. Epicurious. It's awesome. But uh, let's say uh, Game of Thrones, all right? Uh, Game of Thrones dinner that you have, uh, <laughs> that was pretty neat, a mid medieval inspired fair that would make the king weep for gluttonous joy. All right, so they got dishes on there, uh, pork pie, uh, fish, uh, you know, just silly things that you can do, cupcake tin pork pies, Vidalia onion tarts with bacon, uh, Mongolian fried meat pies, uh, 
honey roasted chicken with lemon and tarragon. Of course, you can't use forks or knives when you do Game of Thrones. Everybody's got to be eating their hands. Uh, and of course, you have to match it up with a, a nice ale. <clears throat> but that's pretty funny. How do you do that? Uh, biggest Loser. Whew. That should be the... I didn't even go to that one. Big Bang Theory, Lost. Uh, you know, so it's, it's something that you can theme out. For parties, special events, uh, or just to get people to come out and come to your restaurant. Just say you're doing that. Supper clubs, you can do. Uh, it, it's all that you want to do to bring guests into your restaurant. That's a huge thing. Themed events, right? Theme parties. And let's see. Going in the price point. Uh, the price point on your menu, if you looked at my, uh, the restaurant class 121, I did a, a lecture on that, on pricing. And pricing is, is important with uh, the cost of your food. So, as I mentioned, in the, a burger is a burger, or a steak is a steak. But if my burger is say five dollars I did this example on the 121 class my burgers five bucks your burgers five bucks I don't have any mortgage I don't have any rent to pay because the restaurant was given to me you have a brand new restaurant where you have a mortgage or you have rent uh, and all the insurances that go with that for being a new startup restaurant and our costs are the same with the burger or we're gonna sell it for the same price if I'm selling my burger for $15, let's just say, it's a big burger, right? I'm selling my burger for $15, doesn't mean you can sell your burger for $15 because you have uh, a more uh, overhead that you have to pay for, all right? So your contribution margin, a contribution margin is your food cost, all right? The cost of your food minus your selling price will give you a contribution margin. So it cost me $5, I'm selling it for 15, I have $10 for a contribution margin. Well that contribution margin will be split up between all your overhead that you have. And once again, I said before, you're gonna get maybe five cents if you're lucky off of that one burger that you sold for $15. All right, because there's lots of bills to pay with that contribution margin. So the pricing, is totally up to you on how you want to do it. You could price yourself way out, or you, you couldn't. So I'd say it's a, again, it's a, a $15 burger. In New York City, is a $15 burger, or Atlanta, will people buy a $15 burger? Absolutely, downtown, a nice restaurant, 15 bucks, yeah, no problem. All right, well, $15 burger go well here in Augusta, Georgia, all right, or here in Evans. Well, $15 is a lot of money for a burger. What, what, I don't know if that'll go over here, you know? I don't know, I don't know if it will or not. You know, so, uh, but it all depends on the ambiance of your restaurant, the location of your restaurant. Is it beautiful, is it nice, is it upscale? All right, so, uh, everybody's used to a $5, $7, $8 burger, $15 burgers, you know, just with lettuce and tomato and a bun, you know, you have to have a little bit more to it. That's what you have to look at with your menu. Don't go broke, but don't shoot yourself in the foot over, over overcharging your guests, all right? Because the guests are very knowledgeable, right? They're very knowledgeable and they know what's going on, all right? So I can't find my phone, else I would uh, help you out with that, even though it's, I had a second phone here, I can't find it. Uh, but pricing is very important and Again, you can just Google on it. Menu pricing methods. And, you know, ideal food cost, raw food cost, competition pricing method. And please don't get into that. Please do not go to other restaurants. And just because they're selling at $12 uh, for a burger, you lower your lower your price to $12, $12, even though you should have been doing it at 15, because you're gonna lose money. So you have to be very, very careful on everything that you do on your pricing.
from your salads to your appetizer to your soup of the days. All right, and then you get a good balance. You have ones that are gonna cost a little bit more money and some that won't. You're, you're like your pasta dishes and rice dishes, they're gonna be on the lower end. Pizza, very low end. Then you have your steaks and your ribs and pork chops and all that will be a little bit more on the cost. If you do it right, it'll balance so you have that nice average in between. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that check average. You're looking for every guest that comes into your restaurant, they're going to be spending X amount of dollars. That's what you have to shoot for. All right. So that was a quick one. Uh, hopefully it'll be better on the next deal. My back's killing me. Uh, but watch your balance of offerings on the, st on the station of where you're playing, uh, putting on saute, on the grill, on the fry, on garmage. Your theme menus don't have to be just about birthdays. You can theme off of TV shows, football teams, uh, a lot of the big sporting arenas. Uh, when I was working at the place, I was actually going to the, 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 the owner's boxes. Whoever the, the visiting team was, that's what the menu was about. So wherever they were from, they would theme all that food off of that visiting team. Uh, Georgia Grown. All right, talking about that, look it up, please. Please go online and look that up. American Regional Cuisines, all awesome stuff. Very, very, very important that you know American Cuisine. I, I really enjoy doing American Regional Cuisines with Mediterranean Twist, all right? So I do a lot of the American Regional product, proteins and veg, but then I use a lot of herbs and spices coming from the Mediterranean to get a little bit of a kick. Uh, and then sustainability, I, I can't say enough about that's the way of the future. Sustainability is where it's at and, and working the, the aquaculture for the seafood. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing what's going on out there with, you know, the, doing clams and oysters and, and uh, mussels, you know, that's all farmed, everything's farmed. Salmon's farmed, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty impressive, done the right way. So stay on those assignments, get those projects done, get them all done, getting ready to rock and roll, and I'll see you in week four.